This Typoc make the best 28mm for Nikon and Leica. Nikon's 28mm f2.8 is small, sharp and can autofocus, but it lacks the physical controls that make Leica lenses so much fun to shoot with. Adapting manual lenses on the ZF is the best of both worlds and I've been shooting with the Typoc 28mm Samira for the past few months to decide if it's the 28mm for me. Because all I want to do is copy Daido Moriyama. Hello, I'm Jack, this is Bokeh Therapy, and I miss Japan. Do I miss the place, or do I miss feeling out of place? 28mm should be perfect for travel photography, but for me it's too wide. Even when I had the 28 Samira in Shinjuku, the perfect lens and location combination to mimic Daido Moriyama, I ended up shooting 50mm instead. My long-term loan from Taipok ends today, but I still have four unanswered questions. My friend Phil from Introvert Amateur also has this lens, and is here to help me decide if I should ship the lens back or keep it. Question 1. M mount or Z mount? Typox sent me the Z mount version of the 28 Samira which I wasn't sure about at first. I shoot both Nikon and Leica and the M mount version could have been more versatile. Infinity lock. That basically was one of the main topics of the design of the M version. It moved a lot of people because they dropped that infinity lock for the 50mm <laughs> version. I have two vintage lenses from Leica which have the infinity lock because these lenses are from the 50s and the 60s. The problem for me is that if you are at infinity, want to focus, you have to unlock that and that requires a little bit of muscle memory. If you are used to having um, a normal M lens with a focus tab like this 50 Sumilox, which does have not that infinity lock. Sometimes I had uh, the issues that it dis did not unlock as I uh, yeah, uh, used it. it. Took me a half, half a second more time to unlock it, so to say. To focus in general, I'm also not used to that focus knob. Normally by the focus tab, you have this concave place where you can rest your, your finger. So over time, I just use the ring to focus instead of the tab. That's also how I'm more precise to focus on my M camera. Only the M mount version comes with the infinity lock and metal focus knob. The E, Z and X mount versions all come with the normal focus tab. I was reading through Typox's Instagram comments and they were saying, oh, they're going to make a new M mount 28 a new M mount 35 that doesn't have the focus knob and the infinity lock. But I'm an M, mostly an M shooter and if I want to adapt it, I can use an adapter to, focus, uh, to put it on my ZF in case I want to. The distance scales definitely line up better on the Z mount version. On the M mount version for the ZF, you need the right adapter. Either the Voigtlander or Shorten close focus adapters work really well and you have close focus adjustability. Whereas the Earth adapter I tried doesn't line up. It's the gift and the curse of how big the Z mount is. Look, if you want to shoot wide open with this lens, get the M mount version. Use the TT Artisan 6-bit adapter for focus confirmation. If you zone focus all the time, the Z mount version might be the better fit. Do I miss the place or do I miss feeling out of place? Daido Moriyama had grown tired of his own medium. His usual photo walk across Shinjuku didn't feel the same. He wanted to offer a visual rebuke of the unseemly world around him, distinct from the realistic photojournalism coming from the West. Are, bure, boke. Light leaks discarded film, the junk left over from unwanted photos. This was his farewell to photography. Question two, autofocus or manual focus? As an introvert, photography is my way of coping with feeling out of place, but 28 millimeter makes me feel uneasy. The kinds of pictures you get by getting that close with a manual focus camera, I think is quite satisfying when you see the results, right? A challenge and also a work in progress to learn that uh, focal length, 28 on the streets. It's still fascinating to capture that kind of moments. The results are quite unique. Very different from a 35 actually, isn't it? It pulls you in more than a 35. 35 feels a bit more passive and 28 feels like you're in the mix. I have to practically be in the frame to catch every moment. And while it forces me to be the man in the arena, it's too easy to bruise the scene. On a Leica MT, 
or M11, the 28 millimeter frame lines go all the way to the edge of the viewfinder. So you might as well shoot blind from the hip. Wouldn't Nikon's 28 millimeter F2.8 with autofocus be more useful? It's smaller and lighter than a Typoc, but when you're shooting this close wide open, it'll blur everything to oblivion. The breakthrough for me happened with stopping down and zone focusing. There's so much depth of field, even at F4, F5.6, there's still a lot in focus. When I can get that close and shoot from the hip of the 28, I get really interesting geometry that I, I'm not used to seeing. You can go vintage, Nikon's AIS 28 millimeter F2.8 has the look and feel and all the physical controls. But by the time you add the FTZ adapter, it's bigger than a Samara while being two stops slower. If you're going to stop down anyway, is there a need for F1.4? Then I have the uh, Nikon 28 2.8, which is more than enough for my most of use cases. This is the Focalender 28 uh, 2.8. That's just the uh, size comparison, right? If you use your lenses 80 or 90% on the streets and use it only on fo zone focusing, don't buy a fast lens. <laughs> It's a waste of money. Question three, image quality. F1.4 on 28 millimeter does give a unique look and coupled with the Samira's 14 rounded aperture blades and 0.4 meters close focus distance, you can get really nice fall off. I specifically realized that this Firepoc 1.4, if you nail focus at 1.4, it's a great image. You have that 3D pop. The bokeh on this specific lens is amazing at, at 1.4. Artistic choice, right? With, especially when you shoot your family and your kids. The, the background, but still have the context. There's something very specific for this lens, especially at that price. Sharp wide open, especially in the center and sharp enough in the corners. Certainly sharper than Nikon's 28 millimeter F2.8. But the most impressive thing is how little distortion there is. I have uh, experienced a lot with 28 and that started with the Leica Q, continuing to be the same lens um, for the Q2 and the Q3. All of these cameras I have been owned and now have, have sold. There's a lot of distortion with the Q and yeah, uh, you definitely. just put people slightly towards the edge of the frame and it looks bad. It doesn't look realistic if your lines aren't straight in frame. You'll get a bit of that perspective distortion with any slightly wider lens. Shoot leading lines with this Typoc and I'm thinking with the Nikon 28 as well. And it just looks nice. Yep. It looks natural. It doesn't look warped as long as your camera is level. The wider perspective highlights and exaggerates any geometry without too much distortion. The Samira is really well controlled for aberrations, minimal fringing and the specular highlights when shooting wide open. Again, this is better controlled than Nikon's 28. But to me, the physical controls on the Samira rather than F1.4 is what makes the Typoc my choice for 28 millimeter on Nikon. For Leica, there's more choices. Voigtlander has 28 millimeters at f1.5, f2, f2.8. If I cared about only Leica glass on Leica M, I'd go for the 28 millimeter Simicron. Still bright enough, small enough, a lens I hope Typoc will try to compete with next in their Eureka line. Do I miss the place or do I miss feeling out of place? Shashin Gyo Sayonara was published in April 1972, but Dido couldn't stay away for long. Driving a rundown old Toyota, he barely stopped to take each snap. His rough, grainy, out of focus 28mm look was on the road across Japan. So many photographers prefer to shoot alone, and isolation created arguably Dido's best work yet. Was the stray dog a depiction of the anxiety of the times, or a self portrait of the lone hunter? Dido wanted to be. Compared to the neon city lights he was used to, here Dido felt out of place. But the loneliness was of his own making. Did he shoot because he feels out of place or to feel out of place? Question four, is it worth getting good at shooting 28 millimeters? Because 28, you have the challenge to fill up your frame purposefully. 28 is a great sweet spot to document the environment. I find it quite fascinating when I just take pictures of our apartment, for example, and it's quite normal when you look at that picture and the env environment when you don't clean up or your child has left their toys there and you, you are upset because it looks chaotic. It's in the frame, right? And it doesn't mean anything when you look at that picture at that moment or one week ago and so on. It ages well. Because when you look at that picture in five years, you will realize, okay, that's the apartment we lived five years ago. We had that furniture, which is still there. And I find that emotion quite 
fascinating. With the limited downtime I have and all the lenses I use, it's tempting to not bother with 28 millimeter. Why work so hard to get each frame when a 35 or 50 millimeter is beckoning? I don't take photos because I feel out of place. I shoot on the street to feel out of place and it's too tempting to create from a distance never taking that step to be the man in the arena your channel is called introvert amateur and 28 is not an easy lens for introverts to shoot with you do have to get closer than we'd like to get a nice image i'm introverted i'm mostly shy away depending on the social event but i like taking pictures of people <laughs> so normally you would uh, assume that okay if you are introverted photography, you, you do landscape, you do product photography or any photography which doesn't interact with other humans. I personally just like seeing the emotions, the story or um, movement of, of people on the street, for example. The scene just changes. You just go out and then everything is new compared to the day before. Yes, we're on the street and we're surrounded by people, but we're incredibly alone. Do you know what I mean? Like we're the only one capturing the experience, whereas everyone else is living it. Because even though we're in a crowd, we're actually very isolated. And that feeling is nice for introverts to feel. We can be a little too isolated in the way that we create. Like I don't know many street shooters who like shooting with other people. Like I prefer to shoot by myself. A stray dog wandering the big city. An introvert who wants to be alone. But nothing beats a subject to ground each scene. While I'm sending this Tarpok 28mm Samira back, I'll be adding the M mount version to my bag because 28 forces me to get close to fight against my isolationist instincts because we don't have to do this alone it just takes one step to close the distance my channel viewers or where can they find you Phil? YouTube at uh, Introvert Amateur. I have my channel there. I also have my Instagram also Introvert Amateur. I'll link it in the description below. I'm Jack capturing peace in every moment.